My name is Lucy Gafford. I am an artist and arts administrator full-time. I'm a native of Mobile, Alabama, lived here my whole life. I'm the project lead for the Fantastical Forest at the Mobile Museum of Art. So did you want to uh, take a tour of the, the squirrels I got so far? So this one, of course, is not done. You saw me working on this guy. Um, but this is the bottom floor, and this is the main area where they're having a dance party. You'll the Fantastical Forest is an interactive art like installation designed for little children. We've got a couple squirrel buzz just hanging out. They're gonna be eating lots of nuts, watching Ice Age on the TV over here. If you can imagine life-size oak trees, surrounding the perimeter of the room. This one I gotta cut this table down a little bit. Lifelike dioramas of uh, commonly found animals throughout the Mobile area. They're not doing common things though. A little ping pong cup game that some people are familiar with. It's played at parties, but they're gonna be using acorns. You'll see tea parties, you'll see nurseries, you'll see some, uh, <laughs> some break dancing squirrels possibly. <laughs> for the next few weeks to, to knock them all out. I got a lot left to do. Because I know we already have the snake. This has been logistically so much more difficult than what I thought it was gonna be. Doing squirrels, I'm gonna go ahead and knock out the squirrels. And possibly the raccoon are gonna be stuffed. So I'm only gonna be doing the feet and the faces and tail. Like I'm gonna create a forest with all these dioramas. It's like, oh, this is actually really complicated. had to actually build the trees and then we want dioramas in the trees but we have to be able to open up the dioramas in case anything goes wrong or a light bulb burns out something falls down so there's just there's been so much more to it there's just been a lot of, of fun logistical things that have come up throughout this process um, because none of us have done anything like this before.
Ben, ben Kaiser and Vanessa Quintana uh, build Mardi Gras floats full time. This is going to be the fire truck float for the IEMs. Um. <laughs> so I thought, you know, that would be a fantastic way to go about building the trees would be to use the techniques from float building because it is something unique to our area. It's, a, it's paper mache um, for adults. It's, this is literally paper mache. For the most part, the base of all of the float, this is plywood. But the second you start going down, it's actually chicken wire with a ton of newspaper that's been pinned. We have absolutely incorporated our float building techniques with uh, the installation process. Follow me. Oh, here you go. Yeah. You ever want to know what's inside of a float? Plywood, chicken wire, newspaper, and paper. And some cardboard. But the trees scenery. are made very similar. Uh, there's a wooden armature inside of each tree, uh, which we fasten to the wall. Off of there, uh, everything has a strong wood frame. Um, I mean, you can you can see from taking a look on the inside, or if you look under, I mean, all of it is just a ton of wood, and then we decorate the sides with cardboard and paper. It's not only is it the same process, I mean, we literally contracted the Mirth Company to sell us the exact same materials that we usually get. What we do here is magic. So I got, <laughs> these just aren't quite cutting it for me. Like a lot of the animals, especially the larger ones, like the fox and the rabbit, I was able to find like some ones meant for the, for the yard that are pre-made. And they have some squirrels, but there's like two standard poses. They've always got an acorn up in their mouth. And I want some of them slouching on couches. <laughs> I want some dancing. So I'm gonna use these as a nice model. So yeah, I'm using Sculpey, which, some ceramicists may frown upon that, but it is an oven bake clay, which is kind of cool for the kids because it's something that's very accessible and that anybody can use and make from the comfort of home. So typically for, uh, if I was using clay, I would do pinch pots, I would make a hollow squirrel, but for this I'm actually going to make, I'm gonna bulk out the inside using pieces of foil. So I'm gonna, bunch this up. Make a squirrel, little squirrel body. This is what the inside of a squirrel looks like, kids. <laughs> I'm still working on all the dioramas for, for the exhibition. Those uh, are extremely detailed. <laughs> Does not look very good right now, but it'll get there. It takes a really long time to, to make something that's so small and it's, it can be a little frustrating, but, but it's fun. You know, I never thought I'd be cutting up like corn dog sticks and <laughs> chopsticks and <laughs> using tiny scraps of fabrics to make, make dining sets and, and sofas and things like that uh, for something that's going in a museum. But that, that's where I'm at right now and I'm not gonna complain about it, it's cool. It is the fantastical forest, so the squirrel might have a little slight smirk that you may not typically see in nature. <laughs> Dioramas really go way back. My family growing up, uh, we were known as like having the Gafford Petting Zoo. We had 
upwards of 24 or more pets, including a blue and gold macaw, a pot-bellied pig, a ferret, hedgehogs, rabbits, cats, dogs. <laughs> We also had the Doodah Day Parade. My mom would create these elaborate dioramas in wagons, and we would have the turtles and the hedgehogs and the ferrets inside of these acrylic encased scenes that she would make. And we would take them downtown Mobile, walk them around Bimble Square while she made us all costumes as well. And we would all dress up for a theme. And that was, to me, a normal thing that people did being with, with the wacky animals and dressing up and all the creativity surrounding that really brought me a lot of joy. And it, it's just funny that it kind of all circles back to something. From the very beginning, uh, Lucy was saying she wanted it to be very local. She wanted it to feel like it was mobile. We have plenty of reference pictures for this project. We both enjoy the hobby of going to the botanical gardens like all the time. We take multiple photos ourselves. So that, Ooh, that one. So see pretty. these, how like they, huh? That's awesome. We very much love uh, going out and exploring, doing like field research and stuff. In a way it's like working, but in a way it's like relaxing. Like exactly. it's what we do to relax. It's not That's really cool. Mm -hmm. This guy has places to go. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, we've got uh, one venomous snake feature, the timber rattlesnake in the exhibit. So I'm taking pictures so that I can make sure that he's painted accurately. The Environmental Study Center, uh, that's a place that I, I frequent very often. Um, that is another place that is always great for, for inspiration. I oftentimes will go there and take photos and use them as reference for a lot of the artwork that I do. Hey, Blue Jay. Sure we'll have a Blue Jay painted on the wall somewhere. Hey. Are you blind in an eye? I love this place because it's a rehabilitation center for animals and this place has always been a source of inspiration for me as far as uh, incorporating animals into my work. I can to be able to, to go out and experience the wild, the spontaneity of it, is very much a, a re recharging experience. It's nice to go to the gardens to get inspiration, and that in turn inspires my paintings. It comes out in your art.
I can't wait to finish it. I'm the most excited about just seeing it completely done. Um, I really just want to see people's reactions to it. I'm just looking forward to whenever, whenever the project opens and seeing people peer in and, and being surprised by, by what's inside of, of all the trees. I hope that people who attend just develop a deeper appreciation for the creatures that are in the show, for you know our diverse ecosystem here.